Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and welcome to the next in a series of Gaming Rules Quick and Dirty Reviews. This time I'm talking about the game Luna, designed by Stefan Feld, originally published in 2010 by Hall Games, and then republished by Tasty Minstrel Games. This is one of the games that was voted on by my Patreon supporters as one that I would review. So thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. And if you do enjoy my content, then please consider supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Anyway, on with Luna. So this is a Stefan Feld game. And I know a number of people out there don't like Stefan Feld games. And even those people who do like them say that they're all the same. Well, personally, I'm a massive Stefan Feld fan, so I find all of his games different. I, I mean, there are similarities between them, but this is one of the most different kind of games. It does play very differently, and it is quite, I, I believe that it's a little bit under the radar. It's not known as one of, you know, the really, really top popular, super popular Stefan Feld games, but I think it's underrated. I think it's a very, very good game and there's a lot to like about it, which I'll try and go into here. So one of the issues with the game, I guess, is sort of accessibility. In this game, the player aids, which are absolutely fantastic, there's 14 different actions that you can do on your turn. And you kind of have to explain each one of them before you start playing, even though some of them, it, it won't be clear exactly why you're doing them. But yeah, there are basically players take turns around the table performing an action at a time, um, and there's 14 different possible actions. It is very much a point salad game like many of his other games where there's many, many different things that you can do in the game and, and various things will earn you points and the player with the most points at the end of the game wins. One of the things I really like about this game is the passing mechanism. Now, if we just go back to the 14 different actions you can take, when I'm teaching it, the one I always explain first is action number 14, which is to pass. Now, this is, I think it's a unique mechanism. I've not seen it in other games. It's very, very clever. And, and it works really well with the game. Basically, when you pass, you look at these tokens here, which are the candle tokens, and when you pass, you take the top token off and you flip it face down. There you go, you've snuffed out a bit of the candle. And basically, when it's your turn again, you're still in the game. So when you pass, you're not, you're not out of the round. When it gets back round to you, you can pass again, for example, and then you would flip over another tile and so on and so forth. Now, the player who flips over the last tile, you can see that there's a little number one on it, that's a victory point. So the player who actually does that will get one point. And that, flipping over that tile, that marks the end of the round. So, in other words, let's take a hypothetical situation here. Uh, round one of the game, your first action is you pass. You don't do anything, you just pass. Now, you're never gonna do that, but let's say you did, the first of the candle tokens would be flipped over. When it comes back round to you again, you just keep passing. You don't actually take any other actions in the game. What that means is that the, as soon as that last token is taken, the round is over. Now, there's two diametrically approached strategies in this game, and there's all sorts of places in the middle as well. There's one strategy where you get lots of your workers, because there are these little worker things, and you can get more of them during the game, you can recruit them. Um, but then you'll be taking lots and lots of turns because you're limited on a turn with the actions of how many you use. Another strategy is that you get lots and lots of priests in the temple. Now that means priests in the temple will generate you points every round, but they're gone. You don't have them to use. Therefore, you will be taking less actions in a round. Now, I've been caught out in this game by playing it where one player was going heavily into the temple strategy, um, which basically meant they only had two or three workers to play with each round, which meant they'd do a couple of things and then they'd start passing. And all of a sudden you're like, well, hang on a minute, I wanna take 12 turns and I can't because the, the, the passing mechanism is also the speed at which that round is played. And that I think is very clever, it's very thematic, it's also very tense as well because you're like, oh, as soon as that last counter goes, I can't take any more turns and I think he's gonna end it early, so therefore I need to be really, you know, you can plan out your round, you can go, right, I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do that, then I'm gonna do that, then I'm gonna do that, and then somebody starts passing, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I've only got limited number of turns now before the end of the round. So yeah, really like the passing mechanism. Now I mentioned it is a bit of a point salad game. There's, as I said, there's lots of things that you can do in the game that will generate you points. A lot of the time you can plan ahead. So. You know, bear in mind what I said earlier about people passing early and ending the round early, you can actually come up with a plan. So it's like, right, so in this round, I'm gonna swim these people here, then I'm gonna use this token, then I'm gonna refresh them, put them onto that island, then I'm gonna use them on that island to take one of those tokens, then I'm gonna do... You can plan out a lot of what you're gonna do. 
and nobody can interfere with that in a way. Now that's not to say that this is a multiplayer solitaire game. This has a nice healthy level of player interaction as, as far as I'm concerned. So the temple spaces, the, this bit in the middle of the board, the spaces are basically limited and you've got these tokens around the outside and there can be some competition over who gets that token. Basically you need to be on the right island at the right time and you basically seize the opportunity and there are times where you're competing with another player for who gets in there first. So that's quite nice. The temple area this bit's really nice because when you place a tile on the temple, it may kick out anybody who is adjacent to you who's on a lower numbered tile. So again, there's a healthy bit of interaction. It's definitely not a, a take that game. You're not doing that deliberately to kick out other players. It's kind of just a side effect of what you're trying to do yourself. But given the choice, hmm, I could go here and that would kick out two opposing players. You're gonna, you're gonna choose to do that. So I, I, I really like that mechanism as well. So going on to the other things about the game, the rule book. Um, always like to talk about the rule book. I've not read this rule book in a long time. Um, I have to be honest, but I did have a quick skim read of it. I don't remember having any issues with it. And although it's, I mean, it's not that complicated a game, the complexity comes in the fact that you've got to know all of those 14 different actions and what they do, but each one of them is actually relatively simple to do. It's putting it all together into some kind of strategy. So rule book wise, I didn't have any problems with it. All nicely laid out. Everything's explained very clearly. The one thing that is fantastic is the player aid. The player aid is, it's so good. There's so much information on here. Um, the graphics, the, the icons are used to, to explain everything. So yeah, that is really good. Absolutely essential. Um, components of the game, no problems at all. The card is thick enough. Um, yeah, the wooden pieces are absolutely fine. Now, the one thing that I don't like about the game is, I'm afraid, the artwork. I think the graphic design is very good and it's very clear, but the actual artwork, I mean, I like Clemens Franz. I like a lot of other games that he does the artwork for. Really, really like them. But this one, it just appeared a bit too basic and a bit too cartoony. It wasn't as, as detailed as I would have liked. Now, that doesn't really interfere with the gameplay at all but you know we all like playing games that look gorgeous um it's mainly the islands i have no problem with the temple board because that's absolutely clear it's just the islands the artwork i found a little bit cartoony so not not too keen on that and i think that's everything i don't know what else there is to say about this game other than it's one of the games in my collection which i really do want to play more um, as I mentioned at the start, I think this is a, an underrated Steffenfeld game. It's not known as being one of his better ones. Um, it is a little bit different from his other games, and it's a game which I rate quite highly. I always mean to rate my Steffenfeld games in order of, of how much I like them. This would be quite near the top because I do very much enjoy this game. So that's everything that I think about Steffenfeld's Luna. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, and as I say, if you do enjoy my content and want to support me, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Until next time, take care, and thanks for watching.